Hello and welcome back to Elliot Designs. Today we're looking at sound, what it is, how it works, how do we hear it and more. This includes some basics and fundamentals of acoustics. So let's get started. So hopefully some of you will know that air is made up of molecules, oxygen, nitrogen, CO2 and the such. And we're going to start off by saying that this medium, air, all of the molecules, um, they're particles and the particles allow for sound to travel through it. We'll see that in a bit. But for now, that is the Earth's surface and that is the outer atmosphere. Right at the bottom, we have very, very close together particles, which we call high pressure. And at the top, we have very spread apart particles. Why is this? Well, as with all Newtonian physics, its particles have mass and therefore they're affected by gravity. And so the particles on the, at the outer atmosphere, they're further away from the main centre of gravity of the Earth, and so there's less gravitational pull pulling them in. But also, the particles on top are weighing down on the particles below, and therefore that is how most of our pressure is increased closer to the surface of the Earth. Now, if we take a tiny, tiny, tiny subset of that, let's say um, the height of a building, now our distribution is going to look even. Why is that? Because it's on an absolutely tiny scale. And what does that mean? That means that in acoustics and anything on this general scale that we're working on, it means that we can ignore the fact that uh, the pressure changes in height and we can just say that it's negligible and that pressure has an equal distribution and that the particles have an equal distribution because of it. Now, next thing we're going to go on to is how the sound waves are actually produced. Now, we have a flat plate here, and let's represent that by a line, okay? So we've got a bunch of particles at atmospheric pressure, relatively evenly distributed. Doesn't mean that they're in straight lines, they're scattered, it just means that there's an even distribution of them. For a given amount of area, approximately it's going to be the same, so a given volume even. And now what happens if this then shifts forward, this plane, this block? Well, any particles that were within the area initially have been pushed forward. So we've got our initial position and we've got our new position and it's moved forwards. And any particles that were here, one, two, three, four, five, six, have now shifted. And now you've got a local high pressure region. And then the rest, of course, at the moment is still atmospheric pressure, which, by the way, is approximately, um, well, we call it one atmosphere. And that is the pressure at sea level at a given temperature and a given humidity. Right, uh, that's out of the way. Uh, we've got our local high pressure region here. And then what happens if it then goes back to its stationary position? Uh, we then get our relatively even distribution again. But if it goes behind that, we now have lower than atmospheric pressure and we end up with a sparser distribution of particles within that given area. Okay. And it's just like that. Pushing the particles together, pulling them apart. Now, a good way of visualising this is if you put your hand out of the window of a moving car, you've got a bunch of air particles pushing into your hand and that's the force. And you've got high pressure in front, low pressure behind. You feel that backwards moving force, okay? Right, now, next thing. A lot of you might visualise a wave like this. This is our pressure and that's our time. So anything above this dotted line here is going to be positive pressure. 
anything below that line is going to be negative pressure. And we're going to say this line here is going to represent average pressure. What is our average pressure? It's of course one atmosphere. Right, now, we start at standard pressure, right here, moves forwards, high pressure, moves back to where it was, back to standard pressure, moves behind, less than standard pressure, less than atmospheric pressure, and then it goes back. And what we see here is uh, deemed a cycle. It starts, goes up and down, meets at the middle, and then it goes back again. And that's one full cycle. And those cycles repeat. Now, the way sound waves actually work is we have a longitudinal wave, that's what this is, and this is called the transverse wave, by the way. And what we have is, as time progresses, the wave doesn't move. The wave doesn't move like that, no. Instead, we have uh, the particles, say that's particle one, particle two, particle three. This is exaggerated just so I can show you what this means. They'd be far closer together or um, there'll be a lot more of them than that. And what we'd end up having is particles bumping into each other. That is how sound is transferred. Uh, particles, these, these air molecules, they don't move. They don't, they don't continue moving. That's not how sound gets from my mouth to what you're listening through right now, the microphone and so on. Um, instead, I generate high pressure, making all of the particles compress. Now, that high pressure wants to redistribute into the atmospheric pressure. Now, what that means is that at the speed of sound, approximately 343 meters per second, that pressure redistributes. Where does it redistribute to? Well, those particles have to go somewhere, and they can't go where this plate previously was because now it's the, plate, the plate's new position is in the way. So instead, they spread out. What happens? When it spreads out, it bumps into another air particle, and then the particle that bumped into it bounces back. Um, but technically, it doesn't. It transfers all of the energy. We'll get back to the bouncing back parts in a minute. Um, it pushes into the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one, and they collide, one into another. And that happens at that rate of 343 metres. So if you imagine one metre, 343 of those in one second. Now, the same thing happens when it's pulled back. That low distribution of pressure the, atmos the atmospheric pressure, all of the particles in atmospheric pressure, want to redistribute all of this to fill this gap, right? And so what happens is the particles get pulled back towards us, back towards this plate, towards this empty gap, where this empty vacuum, where the particles want to redistribute. And so this particle gets moved backwards. So the particle keeps moving back and forth in this sinusoidal pattern. That's why we typically see this and see that's our usual understanding of how it works. But in here, our particle, this line of particles, moves back and forth just like this moves up and down. Now, as that particle moves back, it's that vacuum and it pulls this particle back too. And they all pull back and they all move forward and all pull back at the same 343 meters per second. Now, let's get on to some more interesting stuff. So we've gone through how the sand is generated with this mechanical block moving back and forth. It's moving these particles. It's generating this frequency, this sine sweep. Now, this one sweep, let's say this happens in one second. That is what we deem one hertz. One cycle in one second. Now, if we were to have, um, let's say, 60 of these happen in one second, this would be a 60th 
of a second and it would represent 60 hertz. And these are the different frequencies we hear. Think of like a low frequency like 1 hertz, not that we can hear it, we hear from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, also known as 20 kilohertz. And I'll go more into this in a separate video where, we, where I'll talk about how we hear in terms of frequency and volume. Um, anyway, yes, so let's say we've got 20 hertz, right? That's a really low, low frequency. And then uh, 20,000 hertz, really high frequency. Uh, so really high pitch, like that, okay? And that's our difference. It's, it's how quickly those particles are vibrating back and forth in a given amount of time. It's not how fast the wave's moving because that's constant, that's 343 meters per second, which changes again, dependent on uh, temperature and humidity and um, elevation and such. But for now, let's just assume it's 343 meters per second. That's constant, the transmission of the wave is constant, but how many cycles it does in one per second, um, in one second, isn't. Now, we've covered the generation of those waves. We've covered how they go through the air. But what we haven't covered is the fact that how things get quieter as the wave travels through the air. Now, everything that I'm saying to you right now isn't actually all going to you. Some of it's going out that way. Some of it's going out that way. It's all spreading out. The only reason you're hearing it louder than I would outside is because some of those waves get reflected back to you. Now, as you get further away, you're going to get a smaller and smaller proportion of those sound waves being directed to you. That is why, um, as I speak to you, it stays, like, as you get further away from someone, it gets quieter, and that's why we have that loss. Also, you do have some losses from the particles, but generally it's the spread of the sound and the absorption of materials. Now, okay, now that's all of sound transmission covered. Next, we've got approximately how we hear sound. So let's imagine this is our ear, right? That's our outer ear. That's like our canal, uh, ear canal. And then here, we've got two flexible bits. And here we've got like the membrane, also known as the eardrum. This is overly simplified because I'm not a biologist, so I'm not going into any of the details because I don't know them. So we're just going to approximate this acoustically. We've got our sound waves, our high and low pressure regions coming in. High pressure, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure, high pressure. That is our frequency. It, as high pressure region reaches our ear, we actually have a chamber behind the eardrum, and this is necessary for any, any moving part to actually move back and forth. You need something that will compress. So here we have a volume of typically atmospheric pressure air behind the eardrum. Now, as that high pressure reaches your um, eardrum goes backwards because these are flexible and allow your eardrum to be pushed backwards and all of these air molecules compress until this matches this. Approximately there are losses involved and so on but that's essentially what it is. If we go back to the example where uh, we've got air hitting our hand um, as we go up as we put our hand outside the car window we've got Lots of particles hitting the front, no particles, practically no particles hitting behind, high pressure region, low pressure region, hand wants to move backwards. Just like this, eardrum wants to move backwards, high pressure region here, lower pressure region here, and it's the same uh, for the low pressure region coming in. Here we've got low pressure region of particles compared to what's in here, and we end up having a vacuum. The eardrum moves backwards to try and compensate for this 
lower pressure region to reduce the pressure in here, it tries to compensate. Now, a good example of this is if you ever um, gone in an airplane, you've gone to really high elevations, the atmosphere around you is at a much lower pressure. And that's because we've gone up and that's our atmospheric example, if you remember. Much lower pressure as you go up at such high rates. Now, that low pressure, well, remember that feeling how um, it feels like you're, you've got immense pressure build up in your head. It's because you do. That high pressure region is forcing your eardrum to go outwards like that. And because the exterior pressure outside your head is lower than what's inside this cavity, your eardrum actually says in the exact same forward kind of position here um, throughout the entire time because unlike sound waves it doesn't go back and forth that's why you don't hear sound when entering a constant low pressure region like going up in a plane it's because we've got a constant low pressure region it's constant now the reason it also um, disappears over time is because you've got small channels of pretty sure they are that allows your this rear chamber to slowly equalize to your surroundings um, but yes overall I think that is pretty much it um, if you have any questions please leave them in the comments if you want me to cover anything in more detail or if you think there's anything I've missed that you want to find out more about also put those in the comments if you enjoyed the video hit like if you want to see more videos like this please subscribe and Thank you for watching.